Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be making a pitched roof for a flat concrete slab porch. First of all, I spent time visualising the house with a finished porch roof. After considering various different factors, I decided that the best shape was going to be a pitched gable roof sitting on top of the flat concrete slab. I then had to choose the materials to finish the roof with. Firstly, I chose cedar shingles, as I'd already used on this adjacent roof. And then for the fascia board, I was using very cheap redwood. However, with a special treatment that I'll come back to later in the video. So I'm gonna take you through this step by step as I make the roof. First of all, I've just measured the centre of the concrete slab and I've made a mark there, centre position. Transferred that line back to the back and measured the centre point of the back of the concrete slab. Then I got a plumb line and made a line down the wall showing the centre where the apex of the roof is going to be. And then I enlisted the help of my wife to decide the pitch of the roof. It's a brave man who does something like this without asking his wife's opinion. This first piece of wood is going to be basically the template for the rest of the roof, so it's important to get this correct. So I've given myself some extra length here from the centre line, I can chop that off to the correct size later on. And that allows me to come down to the bottom end and trace the angle. Go along with a saw along this line and chop off the angle. With this end cut to the correct angle, I was able to lay that against the flat roof, line up the batten with my line on the wall, and then use the plumb line above and below the batten to mark off the line to cut at the top. Now I've got this batten cut to the correct size and with the correct angles, I'm gonna use it as a template to make another thread. Just using a scrap piece of wood, I've uh, positioned the apex of the roof. I've laid another batten four by two across the bottom I'm going to transfer the angles now onto that and cut that to make a support for the lower portion of the roof. Now using an offcut of wood placed in the centre to trace the outline, I'll make two of these and these will be the king posts. I'm now going to fix these in position using long screws. The two roof sections are now in position on top of the porch. I'm now going to measure between the two so that I can work out the length of the ridge beam that will be placed between the two sections. That measurement was 43 centimetres so I'm just going to use the last of the remaining 4x2 and cut that out. I'm using a couple of galvanised brackets and I'm just going to put them into position and then screw them secure. I'm now going to use some offcuts to strengthen these corners. They're not particularly good looking, but it doesn't matter. Um, what does matter is that this roof is strong because this area, every winter we get winds around 100 miles an hour, so uh, it does have to be strong. I don't want anything to blow off. I've just been working out the spacing on the shingles. I'm going to have 15 centimetres between each row of shingles. So I'm going to be positioning the first batten 20 centimetres up from the bottom and then every 15 centimetres as I run up and that will allow me to fit the shingles. Just measured out the roofing battens and I'm now going to go and cut to size. Now I've got all the battens fitted, it's very sturdy. I'm now going to fix this structure into position on top of the flat roof. I'm going to be fitting this batten to the wall. I'll drill and use wall plugs, fix that in place, and then I'll screw this into the batten. And I'm gonna use some 90 degree galvanized steel brackets. I'm gonna, again, drill and use wall plugs, and then I'll fix this in position. Now the pitched roof is fixed firmly in position, it's time to fit the lead flashing and cedar shingles. I'll put links to a couple of videos about the lead flashing on YouTube. Uh, there's a guy who's got some excellent videos there, and that's where I've been getting my information regarding the lead flashing from. I'm just fitting these cedar shingles now and I find this really satisfying. If you've never worked with them before, they're a great material to work with and I'll just take you through one of the courses step by step so you can see how I'm doing this. First of all, I'm measuring out the lead, so 22 centimetres. I'll just mark that on the lead. 
and then I'll cut them with a set of snips. Now just flatten it with a batten and measure five centimeters over this edge and then fold it over again. You can use an ordinary batten and then going to apply some of this patination oil and that stops it from oxidizing and staining the uh, surrounding structure. Just put the oil on a cloth and rub the lead and make sure you cover all the angles and any cut edges that you've, you've been cutting. I then position the soaker on the roof and secure it with a single nail. I then position a shingle on the course. It could be the outside edge or the inside edge, it doesn't really matter. And I make sure that the distance as per the other courses is 15 centimetres. You then fix that shingle in position with two nails. These are stainless steel annular ring nails that I'm using. I'm positioning them about an inch from the edge of the shingle and in the centre of the batten below. I'm now fitting the shingle next to the wall and then once that's done I can measure the distance required here and cut a shingle to size. So I'm going to measure 17 centimetres here and just mark it off on the shingle. So I've marked off where I'd like to cut and a standing knife would be better for this but I don't have one in the house so I'm just using an ordinary kitchen knife, a small knife. And basically you just go along the line and score the shingle. You don't have to, you're not aiming to cut through the shingle. You just want to leave a, uh, a line along your pencil line, run over that line a few times. And as is true with many materials, but especially these cedar shingles, just creating a, a very thin line like that is, acts as a stress razor. And then all you need to do is um, place the shingle on the edge of a batten, or in this case a pallet, and then you can just break off the shingle along your line. If you need to remove any more material, other than a couple of millimetres, you can use a simple hand plane. And these shingles really are very soft and they're a, a real pleasure to work with. Once the shingles on that row are finished, you're ready to place another lead soaker up here and then continue with the next course. I fitted cedar shingles to both sides of the roof now and where I got to the top, I just cut them off level with the apex. Now I'm at the lead work on the apex and to be honest with you, I'm just making it up as I go along. I've got some lead there, I've cut out another section here which is going to overlap and I'm going to fix these two into position with a single nail here. Then I've made another section of lead to go on top of the apex, like so, and I've cut a kind of snake tongue shape into it so that, that can be positioned here and the lead can be folded around the shingles like so and then I'm going to be making some ridge tiles out of cedar shingles and then I'm going to be fitting them on top of all this lead work to keep it hidden from view. So that is the next step. This is how I'm making the ridge tiles for the apex. Basically you place the two shingles on the roof at the correct distance. I'm, I'm making the pitch still 15 centimeters as before and then you plane off the angle required on one of the shingles then you mark out the positions relative to each other, put them in position that I've been drilling through with a very small drill bit and then I'm nailing them together. This shingle overlaps this one and if you alternate and do the opposite on the next course above then you'll get a waterproof apex. So here I'm just placing the ridge tiles in position on the roof and getting my 15 centimetre measurement on either side and then once I've done that you can see there's some excess here can just get a hand plane and just trim that off at the same angle as this shingle. Here you can see three sets of ridge tiles complete. I'm now going to fit some cladding to this outside face. This is the cladding I'll be using. It's a redwood and the shape of the cladding is called shiplap. So you might be thinking, paint, oil, what's he going to do with it? I'm going to set it on fire. I know that sounds strange, but it's an ancient Japanese technique called Shao Sugi Ban. Now, burning the wood creates a layer of carbon, and this protects it from water ingress, 
insect damage and UV light. So it creates a very durable surface that can last 80 to 100 years without any further treatment. I'm going to make another video specifically about this technique, Shao Sugi Ban. So if you want to know more, check the description of this video for the link to my other video. I'll just show you a brief overview in this video and then I'll get on with finishing this roof. Just fitting the burnt boards to the fascia now and I have to say I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Um, this kind of effect on wood, there are all kinds of different versions you can do to suit different tastes. You can burn it very lightly, you can burn it and then rub it off with a brush. I'm happy with this, it's just a very very burnt uh, crocodile skin effect and I think it looks really good. If I do say so myself. <laughs> To add a little bit of contrast to the fascia, I decided to make something out of cedar shingles. In the end, I decided to go for this compass shape that you can see in the centre of this flagstone. There are only three elements on this design, the circle, a larger triangle and a smaller triangle. And my plan is to just transfer these onto paper and then from the paper I'll transfer them onto card. And then from the card I can go onto the cedar shingles and hopefully I'll find it fairly easy to make this shape. I've just roughly cut out the shapes with a jigsaw and now I'm going to use a grinder with a 40 grit flapper disc or lap disc to finalise these shapes. Whilst I was building the compass I decided to go for a simple 4 point version rather than the 8 point version that I originally planned. I think it looks better in this simple configuration here. So I'm using a board, I've drawn some square lines on the board and I'm now using a small drill and piloting the shingles and pinning them to the board in a square orientation and then I can put it all together down here and I know it will be square when I transfer it to the roof. I've fitted the four point compass to the roof now and on reflection I actually think it would look better with an eight point version so I'm going to go back to the original plan and fit the extra four compass points on here. As my dad used to say, I used to be indecisive, now I'm not so sure. I've finished the compass design now, the eight point version, and I'm happy with how it looks. So now I just need to finish off the step flashings and that will be this roof job completed. I'm now going to be fitting the step flashings. They will bridge the gap between this wall and the top of the lead soakers here. So it's basically a case of grinding out some of the mortar here and then cutting the lead to shape. Again, I'll put a link in the description of the video that I'm using to teach me how to do this. So if you want further information about this lead flashing, then please look at that guy's videos. They're very useful and very professional. I've now cut a section of lead and I've treated it with patination oil to stop it from staining the roof as it corrodes and I'm now going to fold these flaps over so that they can engage into the slots that I made in the masonry. All that remains for me to do now is mortar between the joints here, just between the flashing and the bricks and then that's the job done. I'm really happy with how this roof has turned out. I've never built anything like this before. It took me a few days, but I'm really happy with it. And what I'm most happy about really is that the materials that I've used need zero maintenance. So I don't have to paint this. I won't have to paint it in the future. And hopefully it will give me many years of maintenance free life. I hope this video has been useful for you. Subscribe for more and in the meantime, love life.